basically to do these interviews, I wanted to come and have a very wide selection of guests, people that have experience in all sides of the field. And I feel as if speaking to people who actually are the ones who are getting to test everything against each other are the people who very much have a very important vo voice to be spread in this game. And it is something that is very useful for not only other consumers, but it is very, very useful for brands to hear this feedback. So this is a very special one today. And I wanted to I wanted to give you the opportunity of introducing you yourself. What would you like people to refer to you as? Um, so my name is um, AG Smokehead 2.0 on Instagram. Um, first name's Gabriel. And I am currently still a private roller for a person. And I'm also like an investigative custody, if you will. Um, I know custody is kind of like a, a bad word. You don't like custies, but um, when you're investigating the good and the bad, you have to definitely be a custody because there's definitely some practices where people try to take advantage of customers and that's fucked up. It is very. I honestly, I think a lot of people run away from that word. Everyone acts like they're not a custody, but at the end of the day, no matter if you are someone who has a brand or whatever the fuck you are, I think everyone is a custody when it comes down to it. That is what got us here. Custies pay the bills. Hell, hell yeah. That's And also, realistically, anyone that's actually trying to create a brand, if they have any passion behind the plant at all, they most likely were a custody at one point or every everyone was def, definitely it's a mentality everyone has that custody mentality it just depends on when and where Hell yeah. and how accept, how accepting of the market are you definitely yeah what do you think is um one big fuel in your fire of actually trying to learn more about this market um so like i go to different states um i'm i used to live in virginia but i moved up to connecticut in like 2021 and ever since like new england's kind of like a bunch of smaller states or it should be one big state broken up to a bunch of smaller states um with like rhode island vermont new hampshire maine and i've been traveling to a couple of these states as well as like out in cali and puerto rico as well and my passion is just to learn what the fuck's going on so that customers in different states customers aren't to one state they travel places they're not just like they might be in one state for a little bit but sometimes you can take vacations to x y and z so they might just want to know what the market's like and what are the practices going on? Like, who are the good guys and who are the people that are might be misleading the consumer? Definitely. What is, um, when you were young, were you seeing cannabis around often? Um, so I always had, um, one of my best friend's dad was a cop. Oh, so really? like, I always knew about cannabis and like later in like middle school and stuff, um, I had friends that started smoking and started growing and stuff. So like I was always like knew of the stuff, knew what cannabis was. I just never really like was in like indulging or participating. I was just kind of like my friends do it. I'm not gonna snitch. So I just kind of keep keep doing what I'm doing right now. Um, it was a little bit like, bit of an ADHD or so I was kind of just dealing with that. Yeah. But I didn't start smoking until um, like second semester of high school when uh, one of my local one of my friends for a long time since fifth grade. I knew he was growing. Um, and I so he started started buying weed in the bathroom, you know, classic story. Everyone kind of probably does it. At least I think almost everyone. A lot of people trapping out in high school. Yeah. Um, just twenty bucks for the gram. I remember that price very well. I'm so glad we're past those days. You never got to the more sales side of it though, ever. Um, not. Um, I mean, like I do a little like. Now that I'm more connected with people, um, I definitely do like a little bit of selling, selling to the friends when I find good deals. I try definitely. to let them know. I try to get some and try to pass on the love always. I think, think that. I'm but, sorry. But go ahead. Oh, do you think that that is a, a great way of gaining another side of the knowledge? Like as, as, as I was saying to someone the other day, I think there's a lot of recipes to get the same same thing done. You know what I mean? And I think that sometimes having the intelligence of someone that didn't play the same positions of the field as you will be able to help help you will help you in a lot of different ways. And I think that someone with your knowledge is definitely a very, very important voice. Do you agree? Like, yes, it's so important to not just understand the markets you're in, but the other markets that you might be serving as well, or even like competing with, if you will. Yeah. 
like like a lot of people from New Jersey go to New York and a lot of people from New York go to Maine and whatever, you know what I'm saying? You have to understand who you're competing with. You might even realize you're competing with people in other states. Hell yeah. And and what their pricing is, what their taxes are like, what they're making for a quality product. You know, everyone's doing everything a little bit differently, but we're still trying to get the same end goals of dislib apes and liquid diamond infused joints and, you know, eights for a good amount, whatever that is per state, you know. When it comes to um, what's the best pricing and what's what's the state that you've noticed in New England that has the best pricing and then what's the one that has the best quality? Um, I think the best pricing I found is in Maine. And unfortunately, we're struggling back. I think Maine has really good quality. I mean, with like anything, cannabis is a spectrum. There's going to be good and bad in every state. I just think there's a lot more quality people in Maine. And I guarantee it's a very competitive market up there. And like I hear Rhode Island's doing some great things too. It's a very small state. So a lot of people are on their shit. Um, but I think like Maine, Rhode Island probably are very too close compared to other states in the New England area. Fair. Um, where did you said you grew up in West Virginia? I grew up in Virginia. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah, Virginia. Yeah. Born and raised clo uh, close to West Virginia, like 40 minutes. What was that like? Um, I lived on a mountain for like 21 years of my life. So like my internet speeds were like kilobits, close slower than me like megabytes. So so really, really slow, criminally slow. Um, when on a mountain, everything's like half an hour away. It takes 10 minutes to get off just to my road, to the main road, which was like you know, going from living Connecticut, right? Everything's 10 minutes away. I think it's just fucking insane. And like just how much your reality shapes where you are live and what's around you. Um, I didn't realize that like, there are so many cannabis community in Virginia, like granted cannabis is still kind of like perceived as a, a bad thing in Virginia socially. Like it's not as accepted as it is in like New England States. And I just didn't realize like, like learning, but like cannabis, like how much you know now in Virginia is so much more, um involved in the cannabis industry like they have their own strain called the fairfax four four way that was made out in fairfax in 2004 huh. um but, which i think was a like, super cool virginia has its own strain but it's really far it's like i like to think of it as like the new uh like east coast california we have like the mountains we have like the wine area we have a great land to farm i just don't think people are utilizing the space because virginia is such an undeveloped market right now Definitely. It's, is it still legal out there? Is it, is it is, it is recreation. It went recreational. There's like four or five license holders in the whole state. Wow. I know the cannabis is in there. Yeah. It's like another Connecticut. Um, I don't think the licensing fees are as much as like say Connecticut. Um, but it's definitely there. When it comes to the legal market, are you a fan of the stuff that you've been seeing? In which state in general or just like in general, but, um, in, in, any state, is there any ones that you notice anything that's like better or worse? I think Connecticut, um, I keep harping back Connecticut, but that's just where I live right now. So I'm very okay. passionate about it. Has a lot of products that are not very quality. There might be one producer, one licensee holder, the entire state that's producing good material to process. Everyone else is remediating or growing moldy lead and passing it on because the standards for mold and the PPMs allowed is like 100,000 compared to most states where it's 10,000. Like a hundred thousand is so much more than ten thousand. Hell yeah! I was talking to one of the um people that works over for MCR Labs, and they were telling me this whole like crazy thing about what they've been finding on different plants lately, and it's it's amazing to see. Honestly, he was talking a lot about the remediated mold and whatnot, and how everything is almost at like a Chernobyl level. He said, "Yeah, and I was it's like, what the fuck, absolutely insane." Yeah. that like that stuff can pass in legal markets for medical users and be called okay like i think that's insane and i think that's doing injustice to the people that are we are like harping back to like the war on drugs and stuff i realized you like uh and the people who's almost affected is usually minority populations mm -hmm. and we're giving them this is how we're doing some justice is by shitting selling shitty remediated weed that might still have mold it definitely it most it certainly does because like what he was telling me that is that they still technically have like a certain level that you can mm. have on it 
with it passing and i was like what it's, it's yeah you literally smoke smoking bunk literally the new word of smoking bunk is insane it is, um it's so sad though because like he was also saying that there technically is like um he was saying that there is technically legal pgrs that they're using as well that mm -hmm. is on some plants and i was um i don't know I, I i always thought like pgrs was something that they would already be cracked down on like they would have like some safety net for that like you know how like i don't i don't know if you're familiar with martial arts but in the ufc they have usada where it's like this crazy testing program and you would expect like for food you would expect for cannabis you would expect for all these different things that is going inside our bodies that they'd be getting tested as much as some of these athletes that were watching fight on camera yeah but yeah for sure right not like some some shit's like kind of just going under the you know what i mean like that they're, they're just thrown under the wayside and left to others to figure it out yeah. and then we're just told it's going to be good without letting the proper people like there are people that are very educated on this topic that should be there. Hell yeah. Like expert people that are knowledgeable on this information that should be in charge. I don't think st I don't think private state state testing works. I don't think private private um, company testing works at all. I think it should be kind of government run. Like I realize that the government's not obviously not the best person to run things, but at least if every lab is held to a state standard, there might be less variations in testing results do you do you say that you think they shouldn't have it company based due to the factor of a lot of companies creating some sort of bias around uh, so like basically them? so like here's my like metaphor right in like the 2008 housing market a lot of like more banks were do a lot of writing the loans to people right and a lot of these um mortgage violators were writing triple a triple a percentages to anything that the bank gave them right mm -hmm. and the thing was if they didn't give the bank the, the rating they want or even the company Caminus company call them a metaphor they would just go to another testing lab and have them do their work right and that's the issue capitalism is going to drive unfortunately in this in this time we don't want capitalist testing we want equal testing and if we keep allowing people to pay, profitize testing there's always going to be people that are going to do it a little bit cheaper are going to like you're gonna always gonna try to find loopholes around um, policies and or rules because saving going around loophole going with loopholes is gonna save money. You're not uh, paying for a process. You're not doing an X. You're saving money, and that's where it comes down to. And I noticed they can put some things ahead of others. You know what I mean? So something could be coming out of a lab like months later, and it's, it's you know what I mean? Like what the hell? Like I've seen I've seen packaging where it's like chopped down, like chopped down. And then it's tested six months later. Yeah. And then it's sold and packaged another six months later. It's wild. And I think that's fucking insane, bro. Yeah, this this is, has been sitting. At that point, it's literally dead. It's it's it is it is amazing because I've I've witnessed it being actual months months apart, and I've always like spoken to certain growers and people who um probably know much more than I do, and they always tell me that it's like the the time that the flower is best, it's best going to show itself. Is within those few weeks of weeks, being harvested yeah. and being actually dried to completion. You know what I mean? Like it has to. There's there is a ripe time. It's it's like fruit in a way. You know what I mean? There's a ripe time where it's gonna show its full best qualities. Yes, and it's it is so sad that we're we're not seeing that on a mass level. You know what I mean? Like it's like um I don't know. They keep they keep trying to they keep trying to pull the wool over everyone's eyes and a lot of weird ways with the legal market and a lot of these different events and whatnot and um i don't know i do i do think that there's going to be a lot of really cool stuff with the more traditional market when it comes to um education but it's still seeming like people are kind of a little bit hesitant to even take it serious when so you like well, i i think it's like i think it's almost like beer like I think I think most people know what beer is made out of, right? But yeah. most people don't know like what goes into the process of making beer, oh, yeah. and like what instruments are they using? I, I realize that beer is a simple process, but like in the alcohol metaphor is really people don't like that. But like it's so hard to make, like not to make that, to make that comparison, because well, they're. It's like food as well, though, because like a lot. It of is people, food. 
You know what I mean? Like people look at these certain things as like, oh yeah, well it it looks the part, it tastes the part, so it must be done in a clean way. And then people always try to put all these different these different ways of telling. Like people look at white ash as like, oh, this is the way to tell it's clean. And it's like, I mean, to a certain Could extent. Be. It's it's all it is is showing that it was um it it's there's no more moisture left in there you know what I mean there's yeah. no more minerals it's it's just completely burning to it's burning you, you know what I mean it's it's combusting to the level that it's actually supposed to where it's like when the black ash is there it's still resistant still has some humidity to, to it yeah there's a lot of moisture in there that is not supposed to be there and it's definitely it could play. It could be bad, but it also could just be um, really good because it's actually fresh. You know what I mean? Which I do think freshness plays a huge factor in like a lot of certain different styles of strains, like the candy strains. I don't know if yeah. you're a fan of candy at all, but like candy... I, I hate to say it, I like I'm a Z slut. I do like a lot yeah. of Z. I love slut. And I, I think, <laughs> but like I'm also a big fan of like GMO and sweaty socks and Hell all of that. I love the OGs more than anything, to be honest with you. I'm more of like an OG. Yeah. If I find like a good haze cross, I'm really? so for it. Oh, yeah. I love good haze. I have like a blueberry haze in like my fridge right now from 710 Labs. Fantastic. Blueberry front, wow. hazy out hail. It's phenomenal. I love that. Hell yeah. That's the thing with, um. is is it hash rosin though? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I feel like, um. What is what is your take on a lot of the rosin scene in the legal market? Or in like just the main market right now. Do you think that there's a I, lot of flower rosin, or a I lot so of the food grade? Um, like I guess that's like so. Like I've asked a lot of farmers and processors what their definition of like full spec and what food grade is. A lot of people tell me different answers. Like I've heard people tell me forty five is food spec. I've heard people tell me seventy is food spec. Uh, so people mix a variation of all that is food spec. Twenty five is food spec. Like I've heard people say that like what they're. Like within like a bunch of microns of the degree, what full what people think full spec is, and some people say it's twenty five or forty five to one sixty. Some people say it's seventy to one forty. That's full spec, and I think okay, you it's know, a tough one to be honest. It's and that's like one of those one of those things. Every farmer has a different like internal scale for what they consider for uh for um what they believe is like. Full spec standard or oh, food grade standard or like, you know, should be um, like um, rosin standard. It is, and I think that's interesting, but sorry. There's there's like a whole six star market that's like booming now. I don't know if you ever tried that Piatella and all that fun stuff. That stuff is definitely, um, it's, it's good. It's definitely something that is like well worth trying, but I've had a lot of actual real hash rosin that smokes just as good as some of this like so-called six star stuff that i've got you know what yeah I mean? so like i've had some 70u from maine that smokes phenomenal like great stuff i've also smoked some 45u that's phenomenal great stuff like you wouldn't even know the difference you really couldn't tell from the smoke and like six star i think like hash i think like six star should only really be relevant when you're talking about melt indoor like bubble hash because like that's when it really yeah, like piatella or even just full melt like you don't have to age it to make it full piatella just even full melt like that's what it really matters like i think five star and above on hash it's gonna all melt almost the same depending on the temp you're using and like strain specific too but like you know um like six star and you're using just technically just the stars go above too there's a whole nother level but um I think it really should only apply to like full melt and stuff because like that's really when the this it will really be the cleanest and that's when you see the most effect is when it's like full melt when you're still in the bubble hash form really what was the first strain that actually opened your brain like opened your eyes to the levels um i forget what strain but i had a when i i used to have a uh paintball homie when i used to play competitive paintball and he does he does a grow Okay. And when I first started buying from him, um, he was giving me some homie deals on some like melt and stuff. And I like I couldn't find a melt up here until like like from like at least in the stores, at least like good worthwhile bubble ash that isn't just like for the bowl. 
um was from my homie because he uh i just i just knew i just asked so I, once i started like getting into like how to well actually not true the first time i got into stars was 17 labs and it was some it was some um ra, ra, raspberry raspberry something it was some but it was some i didn't I actually bought it on accident that was actually the first time uh, it was in California, first time. I go picked up some Ten Labs, and I got some foam out on accident. And I had to like look up how to like um, flag it correctly, and um, like put it in the fridge ASAP. <laughs> so that's what it was. I, I mean, like it, we've had all oh, everyone has had melt that's greased up, yeah. but that was the first one. It was like it was like raspberry something. It was foam out from Seven Ten Labs, and it was definitely like from twenty twenty three. And that's when it really got me into like the star process. When I first got a real, real like five star, six star um, product. Have you tried anything from High Tide Genetics, like the Pietella? Yes, I have. I have not tried their Pietella, but I have tried a lot of High Tide Hash um, Rosin, High Tide, High Tide, High Tide Genetics Rosin. Excuse me. Um, and I love everything that comes from, that I've tried from them. Um, I know there's. Oh uh, man, uh, a homie just let me try a couple of his stuff like a, like a couple of days ago, and it was like very fruity, um, very flavorful. I know they have been around in Rhode Island for a long time. They've actually been part of the Rhode Island community, and they're also doing washing at um, a, a dispensary in Rhode Island as well. They have like a legal brand. Wow, that's good. That's, uh, I I spoke with them like uh, probably a year well, or two ago, and I was like. When they first started doing the pizza, I was like, "That's dope that they're, they're trying." They're washing at Aurora, or like, um, I think I could be wrong, but I believe they're washing um, for Aurora Cannabis Co. I think I've heard of that. I know that because I know they're a dispensary, but I believe they have their own line of products, and I could be wrong, and I've been wrong before, Dude. but I do know they are washing for a legal company there. Oh yeah, that's in. Cool. And their grams of rosin go for. I've tried them before too. I've tried that brand, but before he started washing there, because um, he started washing at the Leo Company like eight months ago, into twenty twenty four. Wow. Um. Yeah, but he you should look into that if you're in the area because um I can send it to you once I once uh once I find it. Hell yeah. But it's well worth it. Their grams are like forty bucks. Very very affordable. Um, great quality. It's high tide genetics. They know what they're doing. Yeah. That is the thing. I know a few different uh, growers and um, people that like started working for different di dispensaries and whatnot. And I think that that is a very cool move. It's dope that dispensaries are kind of um, there's not a lot of them. There's only a few that I know of, but there's there's a few really good dispensaries that are getting connected with some fire growers, which is really cool to see for the Boston area. You know what I mean? I think it's so important for the legacy scene or the gray market scene that legal licensee owners collaborate with gray market producers um um distributors or even grower like um trimmer anyone anyone in the gray market scene they should bring in every of those people as much as possible because they have the experience and knowledge from the backside and like the legal side is just a little more like hi hello how are you doing Dude. you know book smarts yeah that's like why but, the street smarts do play a factor in this this whole game as well. You know what I mean? Like like people like they know the numbers. They already know the number game. They know how to do pricing. They know they know how to trim already. They have the history to do it. There's no need to look for old. There's no need to look for new talent. Just bring higher in the old talent. Yeah. And then make it make it worthwhile. Make it fun for them. Make it fun. You know, like. Like I realized, like the legal scene for mass, there isn't a lot of good like healthcare is one of those things, right? It's tough because it's not federally legal. It's tough for these companies to get like certain benefits for these employees, um, and stuff like that because it's because of that federal legalization. Really? Or yeah, so it's it's like it's tough for to be like trimming for eighteen bucks an hour and not know if you're fully covered and or by anything that may happen in the near future yeah 100 percent. i mean there was 
probably like two years ago, I was looking at cannabis jobs in the legal market just because I was like, I might as well try to like build a name because I don't know if you're familiar with Burner's history and like some of these different characters that were able to find their way to a comfortable position. These people, a lot of them were bud tenders at one point and they created that to where they used that to not only meet people but they educated themselves a lot throughout that experience you know what i mean and it's mm -hmm. just you're getting paid to learn you know what i mean which is something that i think is like wonderful but it's like um it was like 15 dollars an hour when i was checking it was wild yeah it's wild in like in like say you're a bun turner making like 18 bucks an hour and you get yelled at every fucking day <laughs> i'd be kind of like I don't know, man. Like, I might get like certain percentage off weed, but is this shit really worth it? Yeah. If I could be having a job that, like, I might get screened at, at least I have like health benefits and a four hundred one k, you know. If you had to compare the traditional market's quality versus the legal market's quality, who do you think is actually doing better? I think I think legacy. I think I think gray market quality is always going to be better because there's less restrictions. Their testing isn't necessary. Um, and while that's good and bad, um, one main medical scene doesn't allow it, doesn't have testing for their, doesn't allow have these testing for their uh, medical products. And if by God's grace, me, us as consumers can find out the good and bad products in the medical scene, I think we as rec consumers can figure out the good and bad in the rec scene. Um, and if that goes for like um, rec scene as in gray market scene, I should say. Like we we can we can again ask questions. Asking questions is the best way to find out what's good and bad. And if they don't know, I wouldn't buy it. Yeah, there is no stupid question if if it's something that you actually don't know. You know what I mean? But the thing yeah. is, like, in in like the um in the legal market right now, I've seen so many just like um so many things that are just don't even smell like anything, don't taste like anything. That he's like, hey, yeah. hey. Hey, wow. smelling no yeah. terps. Burnt it's, almost. It's like burnt wood, if anything. Yeah, and it's like it just makes me want to hack. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild because I'm like, how could this thing have any medical benefit to anyone? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like at that point, I toss it. At that point, like toss it in the process it for BHO. At that point, if the weed is really that trash, just press into BHO. Distill it is hot dog water anyway. Add some terps in there. Give it some flavor. Hell yeah. I've been noticing, At that point. I've been noticing a few brands that I used to actually really respect. They, um, well, I mean, I still have a lot of respect for what they're doing because they're doing it on the legal market, which I, can, which I can imagine is never easy. But they are um, now, like their flower really dropped off recently and they just started moving over to the rosin scene. And I'm always wondering, mm. like, is this just flower rosin is this not hash at all because i've never seen any of them show any actual like them make turning anything into hash everyone they just show like the the pressing part and i'm always mm. like are people not really thinking about this or not are people not seeing that this could just be flower rosin that they're getting for 50 60 dollars a gram like what is going on that'd be like like Oh no! I I have tried flower rosin before. It's fine. Um, really good flower rosin. You really shouldn't taste the plant material that much. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's definitely known your quality as hash rosin. And I mean, like flower rosin's fine and all. Like no diss to them, but it's just like I half to a third of the pricing's washing. Yes. It's it's such a long long and like actually exhausting part of the process you know what i mean so it's like that when the machine costs money and you still have to pay for that machine hell yeah and through the through the price of the wash like yeah. either the osprey or someone's hand washing that shit and either cheap i think the hand washing <laughs> um we'll, we'll get into that in a minute but there's there's a lot of um what's it called what is the word that i'm looking for the reason why i'm the reason why i'm assuming that a lot of it is flower rosin is because there's a lot of stuff that is on the legal market that does not get you actually like any different high than the flower itself would have gotten you which is wild there's a lot of stuff i don't want to throw any names in the in the thing but there's this one brand that you can definitely get their flower get their hash compare it and it's like it's literally the same thing it's i truly do think that they're 
just selling flour rosin, but I don't want to harp on that for too long. Um, <laughs> what, when it comes to, um, what actually like influenced you to start actually sharing your voice in this game? Um, I think one of the reasons was because like when I originally came in the like, when I originally like found the mass scene and everyone's in it, the, the cannabis industry, I thought it was going to be a lot more wholesome and or friendly and not to say there aren't friendly characters in the scene, but you can have friendly characters work for really shitty companies. And some of these companies are pulling like blindfolds on people and there are either having really bad business practices that are either bothering the consumers or bothering their employees outright. And they're just being uh, complacent towards it. And a lot of people are complacent towards really bad actors. And I think that's fucked up because everyone says premium on their fucking product. Everyone says premium distillate. Everyone says premium cannabis. But are we a premium company? Are you guys doing premium practices? Like Cure Leaf, like I see this so much and it's so ironic. Like I see cannabis, the cannabis industry is also founded by a lot of um, LGBTQ members as well as like uh, as minority populations. And I think it's so ironic that when I see gay events or LGBTQ events and they're sponsored by Cureleaf, Select, Russia, Cureleaf is funded by Russia. Right. Or not funded. Yeah, the Cureleaf is funded by Russia. Um, I thought I said sounded for a second. It was funded by Russia by one of the Russian oligarchs who answers to Putin. They are funding a war in Russia, funding a war in Ukraine. They are very anti LGBT too. Um, they have very bad laws where you could go to very serious issues, medical issues, if you just like kind of are gay in Russia. And people are going to these events acting like they don't, they, that doesn't matter. Do you think that a, the majority of people that go to those have no knowledge on stuff like I that? I think I think it's like 50-50. I think they know and they just push it to the back of their head. Like oh, yeah. this doesn't affect me. Um, I'm not in. I'm not working for them or X, Y, and Z. And that, or they just need the paycheck. Like this is the job they have, and they have a boss, so they just have to do their job. You know. It's sad to say, though, but I do think a lot of people aren't very much open to hearing information from different sources. They kind of box themselves into certain information. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? And it's like they it's it's it becomes that hive mind thing. A lot of people have used it before, but it becomes this thing where you only believe in what is told to you by the by the crowd around you. And it's it's scary, but it's like, um. I wouldn't doubt that there is some people that go to it and they have no knowledge of that because no, I for sure, not... never even heard that until you just said yeah, that. Yeah, look look it up. Cure Relief and Russian oligarchs. And it'll be like the first 10 links on there. I don't but back in like 2020, 2021. You and... Cure Relief was trying to... Um, they were just trying to like put back a new law in Florida for like... Um, I think it was, I forget what it was exactly for, if it was for CBD or if it was for some sort of hemp or something, but they were trying to make it illegal again, which is like wild. You know what I mean? Zen, um, they, Cure Leaf and um, they work with that other one. I forget what the other brand is that they work True with. Leaf? True Leaf, yeah. Cure Leaf and True Leaf. And it's like, these they, they do like some unreal, wild, terrible weed. Too. Wild, <laughs> wild, wild, wild um policy and for like they they lobby so hard for the worst policies and i think it's so funny because they are the ones trying to put the people from the minority populations back in jail they don't want they don't they don't want people that are been, been fought in the war on drugs to have licenses they don't want that they want the whole monopoly they want the entire state uh connecticut is run by four or four companies fine federal cure leaf um uh, True Leaf is in here, and then Rodeo Cannabis was is a is a social equity license run by a politician who was against the war, who was against legalization. Ironic. Um, Fine Federal in Georgia is trying to enact policies to where um, um, they're trying to increase price hikes in the licenses for Georgia applicants, so that only 
rich people just like in Connecticut can only get licenses. Huh. Um, it's wild that they're trying to monopolize. There's only two, like, there's only four licensees in Georgia. And truly, and Curly own, and Fine Fed own, like, a lot of them. Well, honestly, um, I don't even, I don't even know a lot about all this shit. This is, where do you learn about a lot of this? So a lot of this is from like reading news articles. Um, I do follow a lot of like Instagram, Instagram journalist stories, like from like the blacklist or high with cats oh, or, um, um, stuff like that. I know people feel like a blacklist, but it's just one of them. There's like a bunch of sources I found also like LinkedIn. Um, there's a, there's a journalist, um, in Connecticut who is very passionate. He is very much focuses more on the negative and the positive. Um, but like, that's just the way it is. Someone's got to do it. So I see a lot of, so I have to, so I follow him on a lot of his stories and this is, this is just kind of like where I also like Ellis Grant, Grant Ellis too. I think he's in Massachusetts. Um, a journalist, I think I'm thinking version of his name, but it's something Ellis. And he also does a lot of, um, journalism for the cannabis space, more towards new England, but what happens in the cure here affects cure leaf everywhere. So uh that's just that's just that's just kind of where i try to find my resources and i kind of and i try to divulge a little bit more as well and definitely going definitely going into states helps me like kind of investigate what i hear from certain space like i didn't believe michigan was that cheap for all the pricing until i learned and went to the michigan and found you can get 15 carts for 100 bucks and ounces as cheap as 27 dollars before taxes and coupons well it's probably fucking hazardous weed though right who knows <laughs> there's no testing there's no testing requirements and uh there's no testing requirements in maine in michigan i mean you don't have to get tested in fact you know in massachusetts you're you're if you ask for um ask for testing results they're legal without acquire to that isn't a thing in yeah. fact not even all dispensaries have testing results you just have terpene results uh, and who knows if that's even true or not you know what i mean if it's there's no law around it it's probably mostly just fucking just printed on so, it you know what i mean so like who knows what's going in these fucking carts carts sell for wholesale five fucking dollars five dollars sometimes three dollars for a cart I wonder how much sometimes the... three dollars for a pre how one dollar for the oil one dollar for the equipment and one dollar for processing <sighs> who's making money on that there's no money there's the, no money. The The package itself probably costs as much yeah. as the whole thing itself. You, you know? can't forget the packaging. That's literally, it's so insane how Michigan is so, and it's, and it's the most bought state. Yeah. It's it more, more people are spending money in Michigan than they are in California because wow. you can buy the whole store. There is no, I don't, I think the rec limit, I don't know the number, but it's insane. You can buy pounds. If you want to sell out, a, if you want to empty a store, out of a certain skew or a couple skews, you can most definitely do that. Hell yeah. Well, that's, they, they that, must be creating the products there. They must, they, there's no room in that price. There's no room for them to be sourcing it. You know what I'm saying? It can't be going through another. So, uh, so like a lot of things. So what I hear is a lot of, a lot of, not a lot of companies, but some companies are bringing in migrant workers to work on these farms. Yeah. In, in Maine, there's, there's this crazy situation going on. It's very interesting. I do think that there's going to be like, um, there's going to be like a, a lot of big changes in the whole market when it comes to that. But I do think it's also going to be like, um, I don't know. No one can really, no one can predict this, what's coming, I think. You know what I'm saying? I don't think, I don't, yeah, I think you're right. I don't think anyone can predict, but I think we just prepare for like either crack down on certain practices or just, shown light to on certain practices because i don't think everyone knows about the migrant worker thing in Ma michigan no, or even maine yeah. like it's it's insane okay. and that's how they're enforcing some of these things and, and that's one of those practices that people are just turning a blind eye to and are like wow we, it cut us off at a good part um we're talking about how like it, it is getting very sketchy with all that but what is your take on so in maine they have they've they've found these illegal grows where they had these chinese slaves chinese grows yeah what is your thoughts on that so like i'm against i'm against unfair labor i'm against mistreatment of workers um i think 
I hear a lot of things about these Chinese grows that like what kind of grow materials they're using and or nutrients they might be using, grow techniques they might be using. And it's all very red flag and like strikes like a, whoa, what's going on up there? Like in some aspect, they're paying these people a wage. They might be getting more, might be not getting anything at all. I hope not. I don't know. Like I, I am against very unfair treatment of labor. And I think that there should be something done, if not just looked at, but actually done about the people working there, as well as the people that hired them or brought them in. And it's two very different cases for that entire situation. I don't think it's right. I know that the prices are cheaper because of they're using that type of labor. Oh, but you have to be wary of what you're buying when the prices are cheaper like that. Hell yeah. I think that it's it's amazing because um, I've heard that that's fueling the, the, the underground Kush scene right now. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that scene at all, but there's like this, like, um, like the Bubba scene right now, there's a lot of stuff that is going for very, very cheap numbers, like $400, $300 a pound. And it's like, um, it's insane. It's you know insane. what I mean? People are buying it at that rate, flipping it for like, <laughs> like, like it's, it's amazing. You know what I mean? It is amazing. But it's like at that worrying, rate, it's, it's scary because like, how does that, how does that get produced within, um, within like a, a safe, like a any, safe standard? Yeah. Like with it's with safe standards and like anyone making money off of it, it seems to me like there's only like there's definitely um i don't know how to even like go about saying this i feel like this might not be the best topic to speak on <laughs> but um like there's a good way to one make a quality product and a f- uh, affordability to the consumer but 400 dollars for a pound is not it definitely not yeah i know it's I, like i don't know if i know enough about this topic i did like a video like, on it but i basically in the video i did I was showing how there's been these like actual cases found and they've actually went as far as showing that these people are how should I say this they these these people were being like held up against their will and there's like even like cases where they were like showing that the um cuz this I forget what news station this was actually on that I um got these clips from but it was like it's all over the main news still like the main really? news, I don't know if it's like still being reported on like to this day, but like I'm sure every here and there, like you can like every couple months they post some shit about it, and it's like um, it's amazing to me that they they don't try to do some like bigger crackdown on it, but at the same time Maine is the perfect spot to like just kind of hide out and get get away with something because it's like live free. So no, that's that's New Hampshire. It's live free or die. It's the- <laughs> but in, in New Hampshire, it ain't like that. Hell no, New Hampshire. Yes. They they are killing you if you if you if they find you with like with like a big just, weed grow, which is so fucking ironic too, huh? It is. It's so it's amazing how different states work, and that's like why I feel like doing like um these different interviews and everything are very important. One of the interviews I'm going to be doing, I think either today or tomorrow, is with this girl from Kensington, Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. You ever heard of that? Uh, I mean, heard of the place, yeah. They call it Zombie Land. It's fucked up there, but it's like very interesting. I want to hear her take on the weed scene out there and how it's even developed to become something that's actually like lasting it, throughout this crazy it, epidemic. And like that's why I think it's so important that someone goes to these certain places and really and really sees from the ground level what's going on. Hell yeah. It's not from an outside perspective, but an inward perspective. Yeah. I would love to actually check it out, but I feel like that at the same time, there is videos on it. And everyone, if you look at the comments on the videos, everyone's like saying that it's like fucked up that a guy even did a video on it. And I'm like, in the bigger picture, I think people have to speak on it and like kind of have the knowledge of the inside to be able to tell me what's wrong with it without me going there and glorifying it you know what i mean if no one likes no one likes being told where they might be grown up with or my where they came from is fucked up hell no 
I think there's there's good to everything though. There's uh, that's where there I want to see that there is a brighter side to wherever that is, and there's definitely a there's an opportunity for everything to be fixed as well. If you listen to there's there's a great uh, I don't know if it's a documentary and if it's even something I should call great to be honest because it's kind of glorifying drugs in like a very fucked up way, but it's um the king of Ken the king of Kensington or the king of Zombieland or some shit. And it's talking about that rapper Skrilla. And okay. He, and it's just like very fucked up, but you get to see in that um, that they, I don't know, they were even all talking about how there's ways of it being fixed. And they, at the same time, like were kind of like wanting it to be fixed. You know what I mean? It seems like everyone involved in situations like that wants it to be better. So it's, it's amazing I don't, to me. No one ever wants to... Never ever, no one ever wants to live in a situation like that, come from impoverished areas, or want to keep the impoverished mentality going. Hell yeah. Right? No, no one. Um, I work for a nonprofit where we try to work with non impoverished individuals and try to raise them up through like, uh, through like energy programs and certifications nationally recognized so we can give them like employment opportunities and vehicles and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And, and if you don't call attention to it, no one's going to know about it. So nothing's going to get done about it. And people not may not like to hear that something's wrong. But the sooner we say something's wrong, the sooner we can start talking about getting something done and seeing real actual change. 100%. But that is like the whole like um, aim with like most of the videos I've tried to do in the past with about about cannabis is just shining lights on like the different issues that can be fixed but it seems to me that um not fixing them is going to fill up the pockets for some people a lot faster so it's kind of it's kind of something that i've had to take a different route with and i feel as if doing these interviews kind of puts me in a lane where i can actually get the message across in a way that is not only just me saying it but it's like people all all across the united states saying it you know what i mean and i think that's powerful it's it's really like um i don't know it gives a lot of opportunity for the people too you know what i mean yeah it's just op opens their eyes a little bit you know like when people go into dispensaries i think that's like the worst time to teach them i think at events where you can really open up with the consumer and engage with them and actually be hands on with the material that they may be asking about is so much better than when they're trying to be in and out and trying to buy a fucking pre roll and like I don't care what you have to say. I don't care if you have to talk about terpenes or remediation or blah, 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 blah. I want to get in and out and get high, you know? Hell yeah. And I think that's a lot of like a problem with the knowledge side of the legal side of the market is that people are trying to teach when people are trying to buy. And when you're trying to buy something, you're not really trying to like maybe like to to like an informed consumer they might, but like to the average person buying a disty pen. They're not really concerned about the hot dog water they may be buying, unfortunately, and it sucks. I agree. I, I think that's like the powerful thing of, of events. I honestly think events like are something that I I try to go to as much as I can, even like the ones in New York or like just the ones Rhode Island, wherever, you know what I mean? Because there's at least something you'll learn from each one of them. You know what I mean? You'll see what like the market is really preferring and you'll get to try certain things and you'll be like, is this really what I like? And you get to actually compare it. That's like one real powerful thing is like in the dispensaries, they are just trying to sell you on ideas and it becomes like very hazardous for your dollar, in my opinion. But that could be like, I... the same thing with some black market brands as well. They're trying to sell you on the packaging of some sprinkles. for sure. Like, like obviously, box boxy people has a big proponent to what a consumer buys. If it's shiny, it looks pretty, and it excites the consumer. Usually, they're gonna go buy it, right? And that's like part of like spray terps is that once you open that package, it looks nice, or it may look nice, and it may smell nice. You don't know how it's gonna smell, but you get the two out of three down on the senses anyway on what really matter and the packaging just has to do the rest i'm glad you brought it up though because i like what is your thoughts on spray terps or what is your thoughts on the whole bag scene 
Um, like, I think spray terms is a really whack concept. I mean, like, if like it's always going to happen eventually, I guess. Like, that's just the nature of the market right now. Like, unfortunately, like, people love infused, like, flour and or, and I'm talking, like, terpene-infused flour, not just, like, keef-infused flour or, like, TCA distillate, you know, Natural. crystal-infused. Yeah, and even that. They're just, they want, just want terpene-infused flour that it smells nice. Yeah. And I think, I think that the uneducated consumer going off the, what knows knows best and it's being fooled by sprayed terps is what drives just the, the bag scene. I think that a lot of the gray market buyers that and, and like the knowledge. So like, I think the Rex, the legal side has a lot more knowledge behind it than the gray market side in terms of consumers buying products because well, the bud, well, like the brand ambassador for X, Y, and Z might try to educate you and might try to like persuade you to buy something as well. They're also trying to give you information that they know is the best to the company, is what the product is and how it may, may be made in X, Y, and Z. Well, as like you can definitely, most of the time for gray market, for gray market uh, sellers, it's usually the, either the farmer growing it that's going there in person or it's like a kind of like uh, the farmer's best friend or whatever rep trying to do it selling funny for them too and some of these people that are just like flipping boxes of frieds that are flipping boxes of like plug plug and plays or like bag appeal um turf spray turps are not going to be as knowledgeable are not going to be 100 percent authentic and or honest to the consumer on they might even know where it came from they can say it came from cali and it came really from some dude's basement in texas or oklahoma or Michigan, like you don't really know where any of these spray packs are coming from. Unless you're the one putting them in the box and giving it to the person, right? Unless you're, unless you're the one spraying it. <laughs> yeah, unless you're the one spraying it, you don't know where it's coming from. Anyone can say anything and really your best friend could be lying to you too. Like, you know? That's, that is the most fucked up thing about like the whole thing is like, you'll talk to some of these people too I don't know if you seen my interview the other day where um, the guy got like mad at me when I was talking about how certain things um, like with cannabis. He, actually, he didn't get mad at that part, but the like the part that I um, I thought was very interesting is he 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 told me that he he like will smoke like sprayed stuff and he doesn't really like um, he doesn't care really about like the long term, I guess, but he was saying that he noticed like some of these different side effects in the short term. And I was just like, in the bigger picture, how, how do you really think that that is like going to be something that isn't going to really have like a long term effect on you? So like, what is your take? Do you think there's going to be like a very long term effect that comes? From I, that is really going to be, very I hurtful? think, I think we need to really study what what the effects of smoking spray terps is the effect uh, is on your lungs and like what smoking remediated flowers like on your lungs true i, I think i think thing. i think both topics need to be looked into further and studied like very closely among a broad demographic and i mean like multiple states demographic yeah that's fair. We need to find we need to find different spray terps in different states, and to people that are smoking them, and that are like, "Hey, I'm smoking spray terps," and they're like, "Fucking avid about it." <laughs> Let's have them come into a study, and like, "Hey, how are you doing? You know, how is your lungs? <laughs> how are you feeling?" The, have you seen? Are you familiar with uh, uh, LMC? I am not. He's doing this documentary on spray terps and um oh oh, oh wait, uh, the 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 podcast dude he's, he's, he's I think he's also white right I'm not yeah. gonna say like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah he's, he's on YouTube right before. yeah I am familiar yeah yeah he um he's doing a, a documentary on it and I'm very interested to see that because there's like moments really? within it that are gonna be like people it's it's funny you know Tata the Picasso I'm not. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do an interview with him soon, but I, I um that guy he somehow like there was like like a film of him where he's like someone called him and he's like um 
they're asking for just all sprayed stuff. And it's like, what the fuck? But there's also these videos of people actually recording themselves. And they're like, all I want is spray. All I want is spray. And I'm like, I feel like these guys are just the ones selling it. And then, you know what I mean? Like these, That's what I'm saying. These people are trying to kind of just like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, It's just trying to delusion. create like a feedback. <laughs> yeah, delusional feedback loop. Yes. It's, like, it's... like, I've, so like, Honestly, I I want to like, dude. Honestly, if we can get like in the best way possible, get the hood to stop smoking packs and start smoking rosin, I think the world would be like, I think the market would be such a better off place. I like wow. because smoking solventless would be of course the market to have better flour all around. But you I, need better, you need better flour for better rosin, no I, matter what. I can't imagine that ever happening due to, um, I don't know. When it comes to rosin, you kind of do need like some tools with it. You know what I mean? Like that is like. Dude, you need you need a five gallon bucket and a paddle, bro, <laughs> and a hair and a and a and a hair and a hair press, bro. Well, not just that, but I'm, I'm saying for like um if if, I, if just for dabbing it. You know what I mean? You kind of have to have They're some like shit you, with you know. You, Puffco, bro. Puffco, Puffco. there's the, the Fefe, the, the Huff, the hot knife. <laughs> What's your take on that? On, on all that? Do you think Puffco's are even good? I think Puffco's are great for the convenience on the go. I don't think they put it, I don't think they replace a traditional rig, but like, bro, you, you, you can't like, you can't hit a traditional rig in a car always. You can't hit a rig outside always, but you can definitely hit a rig or hit a Puffco like climbing a mountain. You never hit a rig, like in the bathroom. You never hit a rig running. You never hit a rig, e rig. I mean, like doing a lot more things than you would be on a traditional rig. It's not the same, but I think e rigs like the Puffco, the Carta, have their place in the market, and they shouldn't just be like dismissed. They definitely have their place, and they're a good introductory tool for like the consumer. That's fair. Def that's I definitely think that that is like um. That is like a good marketing thing for them to be more for a consumer. You know what I mean? Because it is like it, a good intro for dab. It's so it's so hard to fuck up a puff coat, yeah. but it's so easy to fuck up a glass rig on the Hell torch. Yeah. Uh, granted, a, most people didn't have like tech timers back then, but I think like if you are gonna dab on a rig, having a temp timer is like necessity. Fair, yeah. So what do you? You're more into the cash and just uh, stuff like that now. Yeah, so like, I don't know when I switched, but definitely like 2022, 2023, like I started smoking at cash for real. And I don't know, I never looked back on BHO. Like, I've given some really good samples here and there, but I really haven't bought BHO like I was in the past. Like, I remember used to buying, going up to INSA when I first moved here because I didn't know any better. I moved up to INSA to go buy like, sugar and shit for like 50 bucks wow. but like i don't do that anymore and i haven't gone to instant in like years what about flour you never really wear into flour no i still buy flour um not as frequently um the combustion definitely feels more i feel more of an effect on my lungs like the next day if i smoke flour more than i do hash um because i do have a little bit of asthma going on oh yeah so I just started, started try to stay away from combustion. Like I can do a bun or two, but like I don't like I'm not searching for it, or I'm not like I'm not rolling one, you yeah. know. But I won't say no. I agree. I I think that it's like um, it's it's also it's also just so much more convenient and cleaner when you have smoke and hash. You know what I mean? Yeah, like they're like most people aren't processing solvents like they used to, and they're not processing material like they used to. Um, back in like the heat BHO heyday and like rosin is just the easiest way to know that I'm not getting bunk in my shit. Leftover residuals or anything like that. Fair. Um, so when, when it comes to legal brands, what is a legal brand that you would, what is at least like one or two legal brands in the legal market of Massachusetts or any legal market that you've been to that you would recommend? Um, like if you're in mass, uh, uh, Sweetgrass uh, just came online this year. They're great, great processor, really small team. It's like one person. Um, as well as um, 
I think Impress is going to be launching. They have a great flower, but they're thinking we're going to be launching their own rosin soon. I think we'll be watching with Sweetgrass as well. Um, I know Blue River Terps, um, despite my own personal per- personal thoughts on them, they do process really well um, and do have good products. And there's like two other companies, Harper House and um lazy river is also pretty good um they have really good pricing for consumers as well as like suncraft if you're in like cape cod area they're more hit or miss sometimes but more often they don't miss they hit they also have really great pricing too like you can get a baller jar for 120 bucks so like that's 3.5 grams of rosin it's pretty good that is, it's smarter to do it like that too, because I've noticed like some brands are just doing in like 0.5 or one gram ones, and I feel like if you They're, allow people to have that, I'm so they, take I'm it. so glad, I'm so glad Mass has like almost dropped 0.5 completely, almost entirely, right. and they moved on to grams. But I want everyone to start doing two grams, because then we're saving on jars, and theoretically, two grams should be cheaper because we're budgeting because you're putting more into it. The more you buy, the cheaper it should be get. That's the math on everything I hear. Yeah. It, when so you buy, we, buy more, get it for less. You know what I mean? I think that it's like, it, 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 it also like when, like if people are doing 3.5s or like fucking at zips, can, can you actually buy a zip of rosin out of dispensary though? You can do like, if you're medical, you can get very close. Yeah. You can get very close. It's not, you can definitely can't do that. Um, I know, um, I, I think just think we should just make one grams for samples and two grams as standard. Like just make buckets standard. I, I know people are thinking about rec, but like, yo, the rec scene wants two grams too. We just go to a different store. Yeah. They just say, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like we just, fun. if everyone was doing two grams, we just keep going to different stores on the five gram allotment, that shit, you know, like at that point. What is a couple, um, <laughs> what is a couple brands on the gray market that you are very into at the moment? um i am very into i'm very into like manifest gardens they are from maine a very small farm but they do work in massachusetts and connecticut um bridget farms is a legal one but i just feel like you really had to shut them out um again high tide genetics is also really good tv tree is from massachusetts they are definitely surprise me they have really good packaging in fact every single gram of rosin has an ice pack underneath it to keep it cool I think that shows a lot that they care about the consumers. If legal companies or gray market companies do provide ice packs, because these are the key to the turp school, especially with like items like full melt or like um, cool, uh, fresh press. So TV tree, shout out them. They're also really good. Um, I know that um, um, Gilf Gardens is also really good. Um, they are a gray market brand doing wonders out there in Massachusetts. And then in Connecticut, like um, Super Saiyan Squish or um, um, Husky Hash, also a local CT uh, single source wash that makes hash, local grower, um, very well. I do follow him. I do follow his drops. I try to follow everyone local. Um, just, but any of these names, they're very well. They do um, very great products. Um, also, very good pricing. Anyone I mentioned has really good prices for any of their products. Um, if you find them in events, look up, check them out. Seriously, I've I know seen Manifest a bunch Gar- of those at events. I've seen a bunch of. I've met a bunch of those people at events. I should say. Yeah, um, and like I just been surprised. A lot of them are also doing great work, and I think they should also like have access to the legal scene too. Hell like yeah. I think. Well, uh, do you think that it's still valuable to, for people to try to stay on the opposite side of the legal scene? I think that I think every legal company has a great market brand and or are like like people are never gonna people are never gonna like confirm this themselves, but like I feel like a lot of companies and more than people would figure are pushing like the fake product like a lot of companies backdoor their shit, even in Maine, even in Mass. Um, people would be surprised. People would be like, Mass, people, people aren't best backdooring in Mass. Yes, they are. You'd be so surprised. Um, everywhere. Cali doing it everywhere. And like, of course, they're going to say it's fake. That isn't ours. We're not backdooring stuff. No way. 
Yeah. But like, yes, they are. Yes, they are. And it's very important that people understand that fact yeah. because that's so much context of what's being pushed on the gray market scene. And whether we like it or not, people need the gray market revenue. Someone, someone, if someone is going to do it, so might as well be them. Definitely. I think it's also something that keeps, it keeps the, the legal market in check in a way. You know what I mean? It does because like really the gray market, the gray market average is like a, for like a bucket is like a hundred to 120 bucks. That's like average across like this coast to coast. I found that you can probably chalk it up to 120 bucks for like a two gram jar of like some like 90, 120 U, right? Yes. Maybe 70, 120, whatever, you know, you do with the micron excuse. Um, and then that is everything else that's compared to everything else in Massachusetts. If you're charging like 80 bucks, say you're like tree works and you're charging 80 bucks a gram, right? Is your shit really worth 80 bucks a gram? Is the genetics worth 80 bucks a gram? I don't know. You tell me. I have never personally bought it. You know, <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess it's yeah. like, okay. like I, I, I I agree. That's like the thing. It's like st some stuff on like the legal market or like a lot of the stuff that is like on like the the gray market that I've tried that has been priced higher. It's been very small amounts that I've ever found that were actually worth a little bit extra. If you know what I'm saying? Like there's always yeah. been like some stuff that is just worth the extra payment just as bad if not worse than some of the stuff that i'm getting for lower and it's like I'm yeah like, Why, what, what's going on here you know what i mean but i i do think it's like a it's 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 a way that you have to learn because some people will be sold on the high price some people want the the gucci some people want to be flashy they want to have everything that's going to make them like work. there's always going to be a market for like the 500 dollars tenko zushi rosin bucket yeah. right yeah but there's also there's also the market for the forty five u, thirty five dollar gram, you know. Mm. When I when you say like the microns, what does that actually mean? So like that's the spec at which it's washed and pressed at. So like forty five, that's uh, it, like also like how much pipe material is allowed in the um, in the uh, in the product. So obviously ninety one twenty is going to have it's the, it's like the smallest. So there's gonna be the less. The, it's just be trichome heads. That's that should be the game. And obviously going higher on the scale, going outwards of 120 or lower from 90, 70, 45. The the bags get bigger, so it allows more material. Meaning you can, you have more material, but the material might not be as pure than versus a 90, 120, which would be considered more of a six star standard. Well, you know. So. When so I'm sorry to interrupt, but for like no, Piatella or Full Melt, uh, like what would the micro you want? You you want like ninety one twenty, um, you want the cleanest. You want trichome heads because anything else won't burn as clean, and won't won't give that Piatella. So like, technically, Piatella is only from Uncle Farms. Only Uncle Farms can say his shit is Piatella, or else it's approved by him. And everything else is just cold cure ice water hash, aged cold cure ice water hash might i add and like it has to be six star because that's what it has to be uncle farm says it has to burn clean has to be like nothing no almost no residuals left and it just just the heads and it's gonna be a little bit dirty because it's aged but it should usually be just the heads right um and that could usually be found at five and a half six star it should be six star but you can get away with like five five and a half i've seen it done it just isn't the cleanest I've I've had some Piatella that I I don't know what it was I don't know if it was Piatella or if you know what I mean so in the, in the, it, like it's all ice it's all aged ice water hash it's just yeah. technically it's like it's kind of like um you know how like there's the brand Kleenex and everything else is a facial tissue yeah Piatella is Kleenex I get what you mean and it and everything else is just aged ice water hash. It, it could be the name. It just isn't made by Kleenex. Oh, so okay. have, it, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a Kleenex product. You know, that's and that's what I mean by Uncle Farms. This Uncle Farms say so. Fair. That makes so. sense. Um, Cause it's, yeah. When it comes to hashes, what is the one thing that you think people should be keeping an eye out for? Um, 
don't be afraid of mixed micron. Don't be afraid of like lo- like the lower micron wash, 45U and stuff. I've had great like um, sift rosin before from uh, Maine Trees that was like 25 bucks for two grams. And that was like a phenomenal smoke. Like it was very citrusy. I was like, I'm so happy with this product. Even if it was just, you know, um, Kiff's Keef rosin or like sift rosin, you know, mm-hmm. like if it's pre- processed properly and well, it's going to be a great product no matter what. That's fair. What is one message that you would um, like to get out to the people just in general? Um, ask more questions. A hundred percent ask more questions, even if it's how it's made or like um, what yeah, literally how it's made. It's like the most important question to ask ever to anyone. It's if you're curious, how is this made? And if they don't know, that's probably that's could be a tell that one, the company isn't paying their employees to know more about their products. And that shows that how much they care about the consumer and B, if they do know, ask, keep asking more questions. What does that mean? What does this mean? What does that mean? Ask you if you do know, act dumb because the more they say and the less you speak, the more you're going to learn about what's going on in the market. A hundred percent. I definitely appreciate your time. I think that this was something that was like not only valuable for me because I I learned a few things definitely, but it was also something that I think anyone who watches to the end will very much enjoy. So thank you for your time. I I, I appreciate you giving me me the time. Well, I hope we can do another one in the future and I definitely hope to meet you in the future. Absolutely. Would love to meet you in person sometime. Definitely stay blessed. You too, man. Have a good rest of your start of your weekend. Yeah. Rose Friday. Thank you. Peace.